Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Emma, Matthew, Erin, Ashlyn, Paul and I wish you, our church family, a very Merry Christmas and peace, health and happiness for the new year. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Merry From our house to your house, Merry Christmas and a better New Year for all of us. Just wishing everyone a happy and peaceful Christmas and God's blessing in the year ahead. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Merry 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 I hope you're all having a lovely Christmas. Lily and I would like to wish you all a very happy, healthy and peaceful New Year. Happy New Year everybody! Merry Christmas everyone! Lily and I would just like to wish all our family and friends a very happy and healthy New Year. Merry Christmas and a happy New Year to everyone at the moment. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas! Hello. Happy New Year to all my friends and my partner. Wishing our my partner family plenty of reasons to smile this Christmas and a happy and healthy 2022. Merry Christmas from the McCarthy's! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Black Santa uh, on the steps of Belfast Cathedral to all the people of my popular Methodist Church as you gather together uh, on Boxing Day, which is also St Stephen's Day, which is very appropriate since my first name is Stephen. So, uh, a great service, and I hope and pray that uh, 2022 uh, will be a year of blessing. Good morning, everyone. And I hope you have all had a happy and enjoyable family Christmas. No announcements this morning other than to say again a big thank you for your continued support for Storehouse and for your support of Belfast Central Missions Toy Appeal. Your gifts were greatly appreciated. I just wanted to share a thought with you as I have been reading through Genesis and Exodus etc and learning how, about how God has always provided the power, strength and support for his people and all he asks in return is our worship, praise and service to him. All the great patriarchs learnt that everything was done in God's time and we are to be patient and wait on him. How often we complicate faith with man-made rules, requirements and regulations. Do you get frustrated and burned out from trying to please God? We need to learn to be patient and concentrate on his real requirements. Five words for me say it all. Respect, follow, love, serve and obey. And then we will find peace. Can I just now wish you all a peaceful, happy and safe new year and with God's help, see you all in 2022. Hello and let me introduce myself. Uh, some of you will know me. Uh, my name is Robin Waugh. I'm uh, currently stationed in Sydenham, um, but I'm also the circuit superintendant um, for Bloomfield and Mount Pottinger. It's a delight to introduce myself to you and wish you all uh, a happy Christmas and a blessed new year. As we think about Christmas, um, there's lots that we could think about in terms of the uh, Christmas story. And we know that it's the time of year where schools and churches put on the nativity play and uh, Christmas shows and the likes. Uh, there's a lovely story about how a school put on a Christmas play, a Christmas show, and they were singing a, a song entitled Christmas Love. And each letter of Christmas Love 
uh, would be raised by a child. Uh, and so the letter C stood for uh, Christmas and the letter H stood for happy. And they went through the letters of Christmas love. It came to the little girl who was meant to raise the letter uh, M in Christmas. But she got it upside down. And so instead of reading the letter M, it read the letter W. The parents in the audience started to smile kindly. The other class started to snigger a little bit because it didn't seem to make sense. It got to the end of the song and one of the teachers went up and just separated that little child who was now holding the letter W with the child who was holding the letter T. And so it now read, Christ was love. Well, is there any better message of what Christmas is all about? We know that Christmas has become so sentimentalised and secularised over time. But that message that God, the almighty sovereign God, became one of us to reveal the very nature of God as a God of eternal, self-sacrificial, self-giving love. That's the message of Christmas, isn't it? We rejoice that we have received this message. We seek to live by this message of love, of eternal self-sacrificial love. And so at this Christmas, may all of you know this wonderful love that comes from God through his son Jesus in the power of God's spirit. And may you know God's blessing for the year ahead. I look forward to seeing you all in Mount Pottinger in the new year sometime. Until then, God bless. The birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Planning Christmas can be quite a strain. Saving, present ideas, shopping, wrapping, planning menus, traveling. It can be a long lead in time, and for children, many feel it will never arrive. The first Christmas is a bit like that, nine months in the making. God's journey in human form began long before the star started shining. No one knew what he would be like or what kind of person he would be. God was hidden. He was with the people, but they did not really know it yet. How often is that the case? I mean, how often do we miss the presence of God because we do not know where to look? Or because life is hard and demanding and God feels distant? Joseph felt like that too. Frightened? Certainly. Confused? Definitely. Unsure of what the whole thing meant? Totally. But neither fear nor confusion take away the fact that right then, before Joseph even knew it, God was there beside him. Where do you think God is right now? Somewhere far away? Where could you look for the presence of God? Loving God, open our eyes to see where you are around us, unexpected and unexpected places. Amen.
chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Even with careful and detailed planning, things can go wrong. Flights can be delayed or trains can be missed. Or maybe we can't even get a hotel room booked. But this is nothing new. This happened in the Christmas story. Many people were travelling to Bethlehem. So houses were overcrowded and there were no spare rooms to be had. Mary, Joseph and their baby had nowhere to go. Even God coming to earth had to wait his turn patiently. The world had no space. They couldn't pull rank or afford to buy favours. God's journey into this world starts with rejection and setting aside. Not the welcome we would expect. The world largely passed him by. Today we should take time to think about those around us who are invisible. For those who there's no place in our lives or our communities and we should pray for them and let us also pray for children born all around the world at this time of year that they will know the embrace of their loving parents and feel the warm welcome of their neighbours Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 18 that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. Invitations are funny things. You can get invited to a lot of different events. Birthday parties, christenings, weddings. Invitations range in size. Some of them are very plain, others are really glossy. And sometimes those glossy invitations aren't necessarily the best. For example, a shop may encourage you to come along to an opening and really they just want you to spend a lot of money. Sometimes a personal invitation is a lot better. So the shepherds in the story that we've just heard about received their invitation was both personal and glossy because the angels had appeared to them. The shepherds must have thought it was a joke. How would they be invited to a birth? Maybe they felt awkward or intimidated. They were invited and it was up to them 
how they would respond. They weren't forced. They just were invited to go and look. Jesus invites us to come and look. How will you respond to that? Will you go and will you find out more? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen this glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Thanks be to God. Villains always seem to be dark, whether it's Darth Vader in Star Wars or Voldemort in Harry Potter, we somehow tend to think of darkness as threatening. Darkness itself is not evil, it is merely frightening because we cannot find our brains within it. So we run away from it, and it certainly isn't in the places of darkness that we would tend to search for God. The Christmas story tells us that God came to live in a place that was frightening, a place of rejection, of poverty and insecurity. God came in darkness and brought light. It might sometimes feel like a small flickering light, but it is light nonetheless. God does not just dwell in the beautiful shiny places where we are happy and grateful. God dwells in the dark places ready to walk with us, guide us and comfort us in his presence. Is there an area of pain and darkness in your life, your family or community? God of light, we thank you that you are present everywhere, even when we cannot see you. Please shine your light into the difficult places of our lives. The world waits for a miracle The heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel The child prays for peace on earth And she's calling out from a sea of hurt Oh, come, oh, come Emmanuel And can you hear the angel
taken from Matthew chapter 2, commencing to read at verse 1. The Visit of the Magi After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Ending the reading at verse 9. So that nav is a wonderful invention. If you know where you want to go, it almost always takes you there, although occasionally you could end up in a field or somewhere you didn't want to go. The wise men were following the star, but somehow they ended up in a palace instead of a stable. Maybe once they got nearer the goal, they followed their heads and inner sense of where they thought a king would be. So they had to adjust their course and expectations. Course correction is part of the journey. Getting things wrong is normal and it will not stop God from leading us as long as we are ready to recognize our mistakes. The wise men were wise, wise enough to know they had gone wrong and to learn from their mistake. Are we open to have our course corrected? Gracious God, we pray for those who are lost, whether they know it or not, that you would guide them into the right places. Amen.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, born an outcast and refugee, in weakness and frailty. As we rejoice over this Christmas season, hear our prayers for all who have no cause for celebration. We pray for the hungry and homeless, the poor and the unemployed, the oppressed and the exploited, the lonely and downhearted. We think especially of those who are suffering because of the COVID pandemic. We pray for the sick, for those who have COVID-19. We pray for the dying, the sorrowful and bereaved. We pray for victims of war and violence, all those whose lives have been shattered by tragedy and disaster. We are particularly conscious of families who have lost loved ones and whose lives have been shattered by tornadoes in the USA. We remember the family and friends of Aaron Webb killed in a road accident and the families of the children who died as a result of an accident in Tasmania during the last week. Lord Jesus Christ, born to set your people free, come again to our world, bringing reconciliation where there is division and comfort where there is sorrow, hope where there is despair and confidence where there is confusion. Come and bring light where there is darkness, love where there is hatred, faith where there is doubt, healing where there is sickness, and life where there is death. Lord Jesus Christ, come again to our world and bring that day nearer when your kingdom will come and your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And this is the first Sunday after Christmas. We, we do pray and hope you're enjoying the festivities uh, with the family and f with friends. It's time to relax and be together. I'm going to read a verse of scripture this morning uh, from Matthew chapter 1, this well-known uh, verse of scripture which Matthew records for us. He writes, uh, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And he takes it, of course, from the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> Now, over the years, many of us have enjoyed the writings of G.K. Chesterton. He was a brilliant man who had a wonderful way of expressing his thoughts, and everyone could more or less understand what he was meaning. However, apparently, like many of us, he was a bit absent-minded, and over the years, he became notorious for getting lost. He would, be abs he would just absolutely forget where he was, why he was there, and what he was supposed to be doing. On one occasion like that, he sent a message to his wife, which carried the words, Honey, seems I'm lost again. Presently, I'm at market. Where should I be? And as only a spouse could say it, she sent back one word, a one-word reply. She simply said, home. And that's precisely what this classic passage in the first chapter of Matthew does for us. It brings us home. Christmas is a time when we want to be at home, where we gather with friends and family and others in, uh, around us that we know and love. 
And it brings home to us the real meaning of Christmas. Home. Home to the, the most magnificent truth in all the Bible. It brings us home to the great promise of the Bible. Home to the occasion why we celebrate Christmas. And it's this. That in Jesus, God is with us. Now, when the writer of Matthew's gospel wanted to capture the meaning of Christmas, this was the one Christ event that he meant. And in one word, he sums this all up. Christmas, Christ, brings us home to the message that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That one word was Emmanuel. And that's what Jesus is about. He is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the impact of that Christmas promise is just simply incredible. When you believe that, when you accept that, when you claim that promise, life becomes completely different. God is with us. And we can claim that promise, first of all, when we're frightened. Now, most of us have fears of one kind and another. In childhood, it was the fear of going to bed in the dark. It was the fear of school then, a little later on for some. Later still, a feeling of dismay at the amount of work that was yet to be done. And then there's the, the mother afraid for her children. The executive afraid for his business. The clerk afraid for his job. And then there's the fear of others as well. Fear of failure. The fear that someone's going to do us some kind of harm. The fear that we... We will not be loved and cared for when we're older. In one form or another, fear dogs every single one of us. But the message of Christmas, with the greatest promise that we could have, is that when we receive Jesus, he calms our fears and he enables us to celebrate him. He becomes the center of of life for all of us. So what a thing it is to have Jesus who calms our fears, who delivers us from all our fears. God is with us. Sometimes the Apostle Paul would have been frightened when he faced various situations that came upon him. But then he recognized that no matter what situation he found himself in, he was never alone. And that's why, secondly, we can claim the promise that he's with us when we're lonely. When I think of the Apostle Paul, he said on one occasion, Alexander, the metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. Then he says, they all forsook me and fled, but the Lord stood by me. He was quite aware and conscious that in spite of whatever difficulties he was facing, the Lord stood by him. And so it is, whatever you're facing today, the Lord will stand by his people. You may not always feel him around you, but the promise is that he's there. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. What a wonderful promise. And he's with you as an individual. He's with you when you're lonely. Then, and finally, and thirdly, we can claim this wonderful promise when we are all in sorrow. I remember some years ago, we were coming towards Christmas, and I went to visit a young man, lovely young man, who... Sadly, I was ill at the time. And uh, 
as I went to visit him in his home coming up to Christmas. We were having a conversation with Dad, myself, and him while he was in bed. And then he said to me, and he said to his dad, Dad, would you mind leaving us? I just want to have a chat with Billy for a moment. And we chatted. And we cons- the concerns he had. Sadly, he passed away after this, some months later after this conversation. But during the conversation, he told me about how he had once been a follower of Jesus, but had lost his way. And he would love, he would love to be restored again and to have that peace which only God can give. Can give. What a joy it was for me to pray with him that day and to lead him again to Christ. And as we were leaving, in all the sorrow that he was going through, and the difficulties, he said to me, that's the greatest Christmas present I could have been given, to know that now I'm right with God. Maybe there's someone listening in this morning, and you're going through a time of sorrow or sadness, grief, facing difficulties of one kind or another, missing someone that you have loved. In all of your sorrow, today we can claim that Jesus Christ is with us. And that is the greatest Christmas present anyone can ever receive. Take that and begin to unfold it and begin to see as you do unfold this uh, wonderful gift and unwrap it, what an amazing gift we have in Jesus Christ, God's lovely Son, who came into the world to be our Savior. Receive him for yourself and serve him day by day. You'll find he delivers you from your fears. You will find that he will be with you even when you're lonely. And most of all, he'll certainly be with you in your sorrow and in your time of need. Let's just bow for a moment of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for how you're with us in every time of need and for the amazing gift of Christmas in the coming of Jesus Christ into the world to be our Savior and Lord. Thank you that his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And we rejoice today, Lord, that you're with us to deliver us from our fears, that you're with us, Lord, when we're lonely, and Lord, also when we face sorrow and difficulties. Your love surrounds us, and your peace upholds us. Bless us now, Lord, we pray as we continue to serve you and as we continue to unwrap the wonderful gift and come to know the riches that are found in Jesus Christ our Lord. Be with all, Lord, today who need your presence and fill them with your spirit. For we ask all of these things in Jesus' name.